Uh, this is the NeoBooks call for Monday, October 7, 2024. Uh, and we're gathered here from all corners of the globe. Uh, Marc Antoine, a brief trip to Montreal may be in my future. Uh, April has a talk there in nine weeks, I think, something like that. Maybe oh, nice. Even. And nice, I'm nice. I'm going to join her just for uh, three days over the weekend or something like that. But I will tell you as soon as I know details. Good. Where will you be in Montreal? I don't actually know. Um, okay. So yeah. Let's definitely soon. plan to spend time. I'm... <laughs> she has a, a speech to give there to at a at a convention of speakers bureaus. So. Good. Should be should be interesting. I'll be along as her plus one. Um. Cool. Uh, where did where did our heroes leave things last time we talked? We had a really nice call last week, and I don't think we set an agenda for this week. But I know we had a bunch of things we were looking at, thinking of doing. What what is what is high for people today? Well, I have started a neo book, and we were going to talk about the protocols. Our protocols. It's um, the one we're building. And so those those two things are the things that I'd like to bring to the table a little bit today. Sounds great. And and doing a, a how page and writing up a couple of common R protocols sound I'm really interested in. And Jax, given given sort of the ground we set for what it means right now to write a neo book, I'm really interested in the choices you're making up front, like how you're mapping this out. I'd love to I'd love to hear how this you know which path you're choosing through the of the landscape. Thank you, uh, and uh, and this is a, you know, it's not a solo project. So um, I am like a very um, I'm wandering around without having a knowledge of the night skies at the moment. And some of you here, all of you here, actually are um, people who can help me read them. So yeah, I'm happy to have um, happy to share where I'm stumbling through in the dark. Love that. Um, shall we start there and then go backwards into our protocols? Yeah, yeah. If you if everyone's happy, if you don't, to, if you don't mind so... my putting you on the spot, that'd be great. I mean, it'd be nice to just sort of absorb that and yeah, see where it takes um, us. I'm, I only um, I posted. Uh, I might share my screen. So I, uh, at least I'll pull it up here so I can see it. That will help to start off with. Um, it's only it's it's only it's in that sort of stage where it's just it's only very infantile. So um, infant. Only, that's Sounds the right great. word. Hang on, just a tick. Formative, um, perhaps. Formative is better. Thank you. It wasn't a good choice of words. Yeah. So I'll just make it a bit bigger. Um, so and I'll, I don't expect anyone to read um, um, without notice. I, um, especially Marc Antoine, because I don't think this is how long it is, right? Pretty much it's just the first page, just mm -hmm. the very beginning. Um, for uh, for everyone actually just to bring us up to speed i am exploring um uh, around the ideas of bringing um of ways of sharing cultural knowledge or knowledges of different sorts and um, across through time which i think this pro this project is actually about and I have that's sort of part of my, you know, personal learning journey anyway. And then last week on the call, um, Jerry, you shared a story about I think it was a threshold guardian, uh, or thresholds and crossing the crossing thresholds, especially because um, some of this some of the knowledge is a little bit of the knowledge is what I have um, and then some will be what you have but then some of it I have access to and some of it I don't in terms of permissions or cultural um, it, um, cultural permissions or knowledge and histories so one of the places that we started talking about was this idea of thresholds and and something that others could access it as well from different um, different perspectives um, Jose talked around, uh, his comment was around looking at um, my belief system and then trying to come from a place of um, understanding what my my perspective was as much as I could. And then um, and then um, 
Marc Antoine, we were talking about when you were here a couple of weeks ago. Hi, um, we were talking about you. You, we we're talking about the um, linear nature of language, um, some of the um, limitations or the constraints of that, and then how we might think about it in different ways. So what I've tried to do is take all that on board, and I've just started with this, the landing page, and I've gone through, I've called it at the moment, It's this is very much draft, thresholds to accessing information, knowledge and wisdom. Um, and I started by um, actually just, drink, um, just putting down here, I'll make it a bit bigger now. Um, it's readable, you can actually read it pretty well, yeah. Oh, great, okay, fantastic. I've just got an introductory paragraph, um, a little bit of trying to find um, sort of where my influences are. So I've, I've put in a half a dozen of them, I suppose about four, and um, the, and as as discussion points, I guess not necessarily for those things on themselves, but to see if this is a good direction to head into. And then I looked a little bit at my belief systems and I put a few things in there to say this is where I come from. I've written it in third person. And when I started doing that, then I started to discover some of the challenges and some of the things that I've got to start thinking about. Like um, when you write something in third person and other people are going to intersect with it or have their own perspectives in there, how do you write it so other people can do that? Um so, yeah, this is what I've got. And then I guess the thing is I was trying to work out then well, where, which what, which part of this or is this part of a nugget? Um, is is this, and this is something we talked about last week too, at what point does a, a couple of little floating specks of dust start to come together and look like a nugget? That's my entree into this. That's um, great. That's great. Um, it, it seems like <clears throat> just putting down a, a, a bit of a foundational page is is the beginnings of a nugget anyway. And it, this could turn into a table of contents page or just that here's an explanation of the project with a pointer over to the table of contents. Uh, who knows what that is? But, you know, something like uh, belief systems and invitation could be its own separate page as a nugget. <clears throat> right. In some sense. Uh, or or. Mm -hmm. Or the invitation, how to how to participate together, could be a, a, its own nugget. So, from here, you could be pointing to multiple interesting uh, sub pages that explain those things, and then in, include them. You know, when you want the fuller text, just uh, basically drag them in or include them. Um, but this makes sense. Any, anybody else with thoughts or comments or suggestions? Uh, Antoine, Martin, you're on mute. Mark Antoine, you are muted. Yes. Sorry. First, that's uh, thank you for uh, having considered what I was saying, and I'm still trying to see what you're trying to say. And and definitely, I relate to a lot of the concerns. What is a nugget, right? Uh, the the whole ideas exist both as a thing that we want to make digestible as a small whole. And of course, their definition is everything they're connected to, <laughs> which is always too big and it's perfectly indigestible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't think there's a clear solution to that conundrum, though uh, I think different attempts to define the idea in a, as digestible holes will necessarily be different facets of the idea. And you can say, well, look at this idea. Right now you're reading one facet. Here's all the other facets and all the other things it's connected to as kind of pointers. And then you can see, we've seen so much of the set of facets that this thing has. Um, because on the one hand, it's an open list. And then it's about, you know, who thinks this is important. And this is where you get into the more collective uh, social network part of it. But it, from a book standpoint, what I would try to do probably is say, I'm talking about this from this standpoint now. And by the way, here are, I don't know whether it's hyperlinks or 
uh, side note margins or here are the perspectives that are not here but elsewhere either in the book or outside the book uh, but name them point to them and say you know this is stuff I use this is stuff I left out so that to to, to give them but that's a tall order I, I don't expect anybody to do that individually what I want is a mechanism where we can all do that as crowdsourced say this is what's missing from this perspective and the whole question of personal versus non-personal I think is really important because we need at some point to arrive at something a bit more impersonal that we can all use but we need to arrive there through the personal because it's what we can relate to and I don't think that the, the impersonal should replace the personal it, it should be you know one gateway and some some will enter by the impersonal some will enter by the personal but they, sh they should remain connected uh, but I, here I'm very hand wavy and I'm not sure I have a a clear answer I mean in either case I guess but but my feelings about this at this point is the 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 attempt to distill into abstraction is both necessary and clearing out something important in personal voice. But what is clear also to me is at some point we want to make it something that everybody can learn from. We cannot keep all the personal voices, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to say this is a consensus view or maybe a sub-community's consensus, and we can approach it without hearing the million of people's personal experience with it, unless you want to. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so about, yeah, it's about connecting uh, personal and impersonal, or perspectives and another perspective. That's all I have to say. Hmm. Um, thanks, Jax. Feel free to respond, and I'll, then I'll go to Rick. And I'm, I'm just typing into the chat things that jump out at me as being nuggets or questions. And you don't have to frame that as these questions, but in the answering of these questions, you'll get nuggets. Um, mm. um, uh, so, Marc Antoine, thank you, Jerry. Um, Marc Antoine, you raise a really for me something that I find very interesting. Um, I I write quite a bit, and I write a lot intentionally from a very personal and vulnerable and subjective voice yeah and I've started to do it even more so <clears throat> excuse me I start thank you everyone I've started to do it even more so because as a as a response to the rise of um uh generative AI writing and uh, and so I feel almost like in a political sense it's really important to make this is a personal perspective so it was interesting and um yeah thanks so I was exploring that a little bit with this because I thought okay I've got some and I'll show you why I think this is I there was something else I didn't mention it when I was talking through it but another part of it because we I have a little bit there underneath it I have right down the bottom here this came this is a little it's not formed very well yet this is a that last paragraph there is a response to a conversation um I think Jerry that we might have had in another format and it was around um and I know it came out of this conversation here from Klaus uh, a little bit earlier when I first joined the calls and it was around how you start talking about the use of general um, generative AI in these pieces of work and whether you can acknowledge that and how you might do so which I've also been experimenting a little bit with and this um, and I put a phrase down the bottom because I found that I had the very personal th words that relate to me and my experience which I was putting in and then I was also formatting it and shaping it around with generative AI to see if I could you know come at it you know put a little bit less personal of a spin on it which is so it was such so this um so in the end, that was something that I actually did have to um, I have been wrestling with. Um, so that's the first part: the personal versus the um, the subjective, the objective, the the little bit that can be seen from other perspectives. A absolutely. So um, that's I'll, I'll keep reading some of those notes that um, Jerry you're putting up there too. Um, the 
other thing that you said a little bit earlier was around the facets and pointers. So part of this exercise for me is about, um, part of it is my own exploration of it, something I'm interested in, of course, but the other part is around uh, trying to understand better about what the nugget is, what what parts it is, how, how, how it goes, so that I'm trying to understand a little bit by doing it. And listening to that description about the facets and um, the, the pointers then helps me sort of start thinking, oh, I can have things which are just like little threads that are, um, that are easy for other people to pick up and add on to, um, which makes it like a it's a it's something that connects like this, which is interesting. And it also puts together in my mind a shape where I'm interested in, which is instead of having the blocky shapes of things, which is linear is very like lines, and then there's blocks, but this is actually like it's possibly even a more organic shape, which is something that can actually just bump and connect or it grow out. Um, thank you. This, um, that's a really so um, it's it's interesting to hear that with there. And I think then uh, the the last little piece is around how I find, uh, which is between the two, how I find my individual standing point. Like this is the bit that I wanted to contribute, and um, and then ideally, and if I were to live a long enough life, then to come back after other people have built it out a little bit further and then to go, oh, and there's this other bit here. And now that I've now I've become this sage old woman who's in her last days, I look, oh, I've now realised this actually looks like this and I can add a little bit more on with a time perspective. So, yeah, thank you. That was um, helpful. My response. Um, thanks, Jax. Right, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, just maybe to uh, elaborate on this sort of subjective, objective sort of um, polarity, so to speak, um, is the notion of, you know, people are saying, well, what's a nugget, you know? And I, I think one could look at a nugget from a self-referential point of view, which is it's entirely up to you to decide what you define as a nugget. And what you might decide is a nugget, maybe not a nugget to somebody else, or your nugget may have several nuggets within it. So that there can be, you know, a granularity to it or a simplicity to it. Um, and so to get out of the country and say, is it a nugget or not? It doesn't matter. You decide. Now, that's that's particularly important in the subject domain. In the objective domain, which I, I see Klaus um, writing more in the sort of more of the objective domain about content and content mastery, truth seeking sort of things, then, you know, there may be a heterogeneity of definitions of nuggets, that there may be different categories of nuggets. Um, and so I, you know, what, 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 what I heard you talking about was uh, at least in my framework, is well, how can we create complex, adaptive, agile learning systems that are constantly evolving and trying to get ahead of the dystopian curve, so to speak? <laughs> um, and can can we do that? Can we get to the point? Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you're Margaret Atwater wrote a book not that long ago, uh, called Practical Utopia. And I actually took a course um, and um, I, I was not overwhelmed with it, but it was, it, was, uh, it was a fascinating process to go through. But to me, it's still smacked of this traditional book marketing, corporate marketing type of framework, which I think is long gone as far as I'm concerned, if we're going to really develop these... Um, knowledge and uh, wisdom learning beloved learning communities call or whatever you whatever however you want to define your nuggets so to speak um but i do want to pick up on one word that was music to my ears um where you put storyline i mean song line sorry so i'm curious to know what you meant by song line because song line in itself could be a nugget mm -hmm. i don't know what your nugget means Oh, that is so, um, that's Rick. That's a, your question is really useful there for for a few reasons. Um, so I can't, um I'll do song lines. Oh, sorry, is it my yeah? So my, um, 
song lines and then I'll come back to what you said a little bit earlier and um in Australia in the um Australia there's a, a um our indigenous people in Australia the aboriginal people there are about 200 nation uh, nations of aboriginal peoples in Australia so every, each one of those has their own uh, language and culture but also subgroups and subcultures and sublanguages and it's it's very it's a highly diverse and it's the oldest living culture in the world and I have I'm lucky enough to live in Australia I'm incredibly proud of that uh, there's so much to learn from that now I'm a non-indigenous person and I have inherited um, and I live on the same country and I'm welcomed into a lot of the knowledge and this knowledge sharing that goes on but I have to um uh, I've also really might try and be as mindful and respectful as I can of the various cultures and the various nations that um, I live around. And song lines is interesting, and you'll see um, that because you think about song lines as being the lines in the song, which is your perspective, which could be part of the nugget, right? That's the yeah. beautiful part of it. But song lines and song lines in Australia in the Australian context, especially with Indigenous peoples, is that is um, the way that they map the country and the story across a millennia. So they, the a particular, you know, everyone does it a little bit differently because they're all different, living on different pieces of the country. So a song line, say where I'm living here, um, might be something that says in the, you know, in the beginning when the the eagle was here and Bunjil was around. Um, we created this hill that you have to now go walk around. And if you walk around it, you'll find that there's a river there, but don't drink from that part of the river. You want to go over to the other bit where this particular story happened. And they map the land through song lines. It's, in, it's really beautiful. And then sing it. Um, and the singing uh, and, and dance to it as well. And that the those song lines go back for tens of thousands of years, like tens of thousands of years. It's mind blowing. Um, so song, it is incredible. So, so and there you can, they can, um, and some of those stories haven't changed in tens of thousands mm. of years. It's ex so anyway, I'm, as you can see, I'm quite proud of it. And, <laughs> but at the same time, it's not my, I can't go and write or sing and a song line on there. It's not mine. I don't have um, permission for it. And, with this, then there's a cultural sensitivity, but also too, if even if I did, even if I ignored that and then I went and wrote it, it wouldn't have any meaning. Wouldn't have the meaning. It wouldn't be appropriate, and it wouldn't have the the cultural knowledge because I I don't have I haven't been enculturated into that. So, song lines has then Rick for our discussion. Why I think that's interesting because I had a blind spot about a song line, and this conversation has actually. Um, shown me two different sides of what song lines mean and mm. I hadn't even gone there with that um, so that's the, the first so it could be it, and it could be it could be both because I think your earlier comments have helped me understand it's not about getting this right no of course not, not. like there's a perfect one mm. yeah so there's a plurality um, or, exactly. or, here yeah. that's going on. So yeah. then it becomes what you're saying about you know complex adaptive learning systems, it, it which is exactly what I'm really curious about, which is why I can um because then there's no it's it means we're working with something that's malleable and that's yeah. and that's really exciting. Um so it means like it's kind of a choose your own adventure as long as you're saying it's an adventure and you you can kind of make it a way that's open enough for others to engage in. And that's when it, that's when also, this is what I'm hearing. Um, also, that's when um, some of the, even probably some of the, our protocol might help at some point where we go, well, and we've got this in here where we've got an agreed formats. And I know there's a how to write in neo bookish that's in here. Um, as well so there's some ways that we have which are like our information transfer transfer protocols or our api kind of system between us that's working there um thank you really helpful 
if I could just quickly respond, because um, I've been on grandpa duty uh, over the last four days. My daughter just walked in, which is kind of nice. And I had to go out shopping at one point, and I, I, I decided to listen to the sermon, the U Church. I don't go anymore, but I, it's a new black minister, and I thought I'll listen to it. And the first thing she spoke about was dream time. <laughs> and, you know, and it's funny because when I when I did a sabbatical in Australia back in 1993-94, I actually bought a T-shirt, which is my favorite T-shirt, and I still wear it to this day, which is on dream time. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the analogous of uh, um, what can we learn from the indigenous wisdom of songlines to something that's more contemporary that we can take ownership over. Um, and that's the reason why I, I um, have become interested in how can we... How can non-musicians write lyrics and songs that might be meaningful to oneself and a few other people or more, depending upon whether it resonates with people? And how can we sort of use that as just one facet of a complex, agile learning system? Because we have, you know, that are, and the other thing is, I, when I listened to the sermon, I thought, oh, God, why, why is this so antiquated? Why aren't we? Why aren't? Why aren't? Why? Why do we get away from sermons? They're totally ineffective. They've been preaching this nonsense for m decades, and it doesn't make much difference. Why do we keep on? Doing, why aren't we developing complex, agile, agile adaptive systems with it? And as I was going around, I was thinking, I've got to change. I've got to work through the humanist group, who the renegade, the black sheep of the organization. To say, let's see if we can stir the pot. So in our next humanist meeting, that's that's the good trouble I'm going to get up to, to see if we can get away from sermons and actually have people breaking up into small conversations about what's meaningful about their song lines. Oh, I love it, Rick the Rebel, um, right. Church. The yeah, equity, equity Muse, please, Equity Muse, yeah, Equity, equity Muse, muse. Of, course, of course. Um, Jose, go ahead, and then I'd like to jump into a couple of things, too. Sure. Um, so for me, the two things are, are resonating. One, we keep talking about books. And um, and I, I, I think we need to figure out how to reframe it so that we're not thinking about a book, a linear book. Um, that, to me is is a scary thing scary in the sense that we're, we're just drawn back to the thing we know the thing we can visualize the thing we can uh experience and and that's what i think we're trying to avoid doing and yet it's the thing that draws us back and so whenever and i'm not pointing fingers here because i'm doing the same thing with the book that i'm writing right but it, i don't want it to be a book i just don't know how to make it not be right mm -hmm. Um, and so, so that's the first thing is, is how do we decompose a book into ideas and how do we make those ideas, um, flourish on their, on their own? with relationships between the different ideas to make a narrative, but that that the, it's about the different ideas. And maybe a whole book is only three ideas, right? That's made up of dozens of different, um, do dozens of different um, nuggets that support those ideas, right? And, and so, so that's the first piece that's, that's resonating for me is that, that I think we need to figure out a way to reframe the, the, the idea of the book. The second is what Marc Antoine said, which is um, that a nugget represents an idea and that really flows well with um, how we wound up doing our protocols, which is to say that the our protocol is actually an answer to a need. And the need is actually the, the fundamental piece there. Um, and I think that what we're talking about here is the 
facet or perspective on an idea and that the idea is the fundamental piece and that the nugget is just the perspective on that on that thing and so we kind of need to figure out um how we frame ideas as independently as we can and then how we frame the perspective of those ideas uh and uh, as attachments or, or links to uh those ideas so those are the two things and i know mark antoine wants to really jump in here so uh, i'll shut up uh mark antoine can i jump in before you or would you like to go first okay thanks uh, so many many good thoughts here this is this conversation is generating a lot of good things um my one of my primitive understandings, outsider understandings of songlines, is that there are often many different levels or layers of songline. There's the songline that you're willing to perform for the tourists. <clears throat> there's a songline you're willing to talk to to an ethnographer, and then there's a songline that you only do always ever within the community, <clears throat> and and is richer and and more private and contains whatever else. Another piece of my understanding of songlines is that they often contain, <clears throat> they're extremely tied to the land because they're sort of like a spoken geography of the land, except they weave in mythology, but they also weave in easements and property rights and other kinds of things. Like that other tribe from the West is allowed to hunt over here uh, in these seasons. And this over here is a shared weir that we, you know, we've, that we planted, uh, that we set up in the river, like, 30,000 years ago, I'm making that up, but this is how far back these things can go. Uh, it complicates things probably a lot, that there are over like 550 different languages and dialects across Australia. There's very little uniformity of language across the continent, so that's got to factor in. But it, it appears that song lines are quite common across the whole continent. This is how, how people work. Separate set of thoughts. The gateways or the thresholds are sort of, to take a really blunt Western look at it, the, the, the places of linkage between dream time and what we think of as consensus reality, where for, I think, uh, Aboriginal perspectives, there isn't that strong a division between dream time and, and what, what we think of as consensus reality. It blends and flows together. And one of the things I'm really curious about, just from how you've stated this, Jax, is how do we even post that threshold? How do we hold an interaction where the two sides of the interaction, and here maybe Tyson Yungaporta is a good is a good uh, uh, translator or or transducer because he has an ability to represent without defining both capitalism and uh, Aboriginal wisdom uh, in ways that are really I think quite perceptive and useful. But but for me the gateways or the thresholds are those spaces where these di extremely different cultures might meet. And maybe they will meet uncomfortably inside the format of a book or a nugget, and we should be like very alert to that. Um, but I think what we want maybe, and this is maybe a third thought, is if we're doing this right, part of what we're doing is we're developing a language for the media medium of the next generation. Because I, I did a short video um, uh, a year ago maybe that was like, hey, uh, the internet is stuck in mainstream media metaphors. We have virtual books, movies, radio, TV, uh, magazine articles, but we really haven't pushed the thinking very much. We seem to be trapped inside of those old metaphors. And a piece of what we're trying to do here in order to have these complex learning systems of, of living regenerated books um, is to figure out and maybe prototype or pioneer how that works and if we're lucky we we manage to sort of help help evolve this new way of thinking together productively i mean i think the goal is relatively simple is to, is to sort of think together productively to become more of a hive mind by which i don't mean that we all agree on the rational aspects of the thing we're discussing and we we can point to a hierarchical argument that we all like yep check that represents me i don't mean that at all but I mean that we can interpenetrate and become permeable to each other's perspectives in a respectful way that gives us insights and leads us into some really new and interesting and exciting places that honor the old, but also make way for the new. Because now we have durable memory, at least until the electromagnetic pulse you know, wipes out all of our media. 
Um, but we've got a place where we can save conversations and, and re-listen to them and all that kind of stuff. That's sort of normal these days. Okay, great. What else do we do? How else do we enter this world um, to make these futures come alive a little bit better? Um, Mark Antoine, over to you. Ah, going in all in many directions at once, and that's the problem with nuggets, right? They're right. going all in many directions at all at once. A good uh, nugget will do that. A good, yeah. Well, I, I was thinking about um, first when Jose was speaking about an idea and a nugget as perspective. I'm still trying to understand what I'm saying when I say nugget. So it's not these are not fixed in stone definitions, but in a way, yes, absolutely. The, the nugget is a unit of communication, really, first and foremost. It's about, because the ideas are fractal, they contain one another, and each nugget should contain some nuggets, or each idea that you use to build a nugget could have its own nugget, in theory. But what, what you're doing when you're creating a nugget is saying, listen, this is a piece of talking about an idea that's supposed to make sense on its own, and, and hopefully be understandable. Of course, that depends on the audience. And that means the idea cannot be described by us. There's, no, there's not one true nugget, like there's not one true thing. And, and when uh, Rick was speaking about there, there's going to be many criteria, I totally, totally agree. The, I think what's really important for a community is to ask themselves, what are our community criteria for nugget quality? And some communities will need more objective criteria and some communities will need more personal criteria. And that's perfectly fine because there's different needs. And different... But on the other hand, being able to name this nugget is from this very rooted perspective, but I need to understand it a bit more abstractly because I need to port it in this different context or I need to, and or, or vice versa, I need to take this abstract thing and make it rooted in this context. Um, the, and, 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 and what's, what I wanted to say when you were talking, uh, Jose is what's a book, <laughs> uh, there's in that way. Yes. A book is a perspective in that it's a set of nuggets that forms a coherent story and often as a monograph, like a single author entity, sometimes not there's collectives, but let's talk about monographs, it's, it's saying here's a perspective of all these things that fit together to form a coherent vision. If we're speaking of plural voice, then you have, you want to show how these different perspectives talk to one another, and that's kind of the next level up, and that's why we have collectives to allow these multiple visions. So that's one aspect of the book, it's this unit of coherence of there's a nugget is a unit of communication and, and book is a unit of coherence. And the other aspect of a book is it's an act of publishing. It's, it's about saying, you know, our understanding changes all the bloody time as in reality. Uh, let's take a picture of uh, that point in time in the, in the river, the flow of ideas, so that we can refer to something stable when we talk about it and we think about it. And that's important too. Uh, when we have a dialogue at some point, we need to be able to say, okay, I'm not sure I agree with that, but that needs to be stable enough, even if the person who had the thought might have totally changed their mindsets, legitimately. <laughs> but we still need to be able to address that point in time. Now, in a modern context, do we want to reproduce that? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but what's important from my standpoint, and when you said, you know, we're starting from a goal when you spoke of the protocol, or I don't think that's a term you used. Um, but but you know you, a need. you do a, pro a need. Thank you. Uh, and absolutely, and that way, we can think of not so much the unit of coherence or the unit of snapshot of the snapshot aspect of the book, but we have a need. What all do we need to understand to understand? the need from the community standpoint. And this is obviously going to be ever-changing because 
the need evolves as it's being understood, as it's being discussed, as it's being partly answered. Um, and, and here we are not dealing with the snapshot. We are dealing with the evolving mesh. Uh, and that's fine. The, the, on the other hand, the idea is to address that need. There is this much you need to understand about the community's position. So there's all these nuggets representing different perspectives, and you need to have an idea of all of that before you can begin to address the need, because otherwise you're missing a dimension of the need. And I, I, again, I don't think this corresponds to a book. And this is this is the more, you know, modern units that Jerry was talking about. Uh, but it's anything that could be relevant. Now, of course, sometimes what can be relevant, or often what can be relevant, will be more than one brain can hold. And that's also the reality. I mean, when does the nugget point to an encyclopedia and how much learning is good enough? Which is also a real question. I think that's a statistical question. The idea that you've read this one. So these ones, these ones, these ones are close enough that maybe you don't need to read them. And let's instead read this other one, which is different enough that you'll learn something new. Uh, and this is where we get into statistics. And, 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 and because different people will have different starting points, that means what they need to read will be very different. And, 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 and we should all, almost have a dialogue. I mean, did this feel new to you? Or was this old hash? Uh, you know, was this a rehash of, of old things for you? And what is the, new, the, the, the frontier of the, of the new for you, given what you already know? Uh, and this is where I think it's really interesting to think of how do we, I mean, we compose nuggets as units because that's what we can do as humans, but how can we compose webs of nuggets as meaningful holes, not from, from a single perspective, but from a multiple perspective? Um, I think this is where I was going. Thanks, Mark Antoine. Uh, Jax, uh, any any thoughts? And also, could you release the screen so we can see each other better? Oh, yeah. Yes, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. That's okay. Stop share. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, that's look, yeah. There's oh, everybody. Look at that. yeah. Hello. Thank you for that. So. <laughs> oh, um, apologies. So, um, just I just want to check what you, just a word you just said then. You said we can release a meaningful hole or a meaningful hold. That last no, no, no. I said, uh, I said, I said a mesh at some point, maybe. I said mm -hmm. we can release a, a, a web of nuggets, right? A connected yeah. web of nuggets and yeah. say this is kind of all we collectively know about this. And of yeah. course, nobody can be expected to read the whole thing, but we can say, okay, how how at what point can you say you've explored enough to kind of know what's in there? Because there will be overlap, there will be, and that's fine. Uh, but mm -hmm. but this has to be very uh, need directed because that's when you know you've read enough for a given purpose. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so. So, um, thank, thanks so much. The, really, this there's so there's really rich. So I won't be. Um, I'm going to go back and have another look afterwards and just process some of what you you're saying because I think it's really helpful. Um, or all of you actually. This is um, this is a nugget in itself. I, something it occurs to me as you're talking, especially about the sh um, sharing the sharing conversations, and it's something it's it's something that that I bringing from a business world, which is around, you know, when you have have a you start building agreement and you write something up and then you run around to everyone with this piece of paper and say, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Are you thinking of this? Are you thinking of this? What do you reckon about this? So those kind of conversations are very familiar to me. Yeah, and good strategy, if, it's, if, if strategy is the right word, is actually it's not about the piece of paper or, you know, digital, obviously, but um, it's about the building of all those conversations. So actually everyone has their voice laid over the top of it and they go, well, Negoti I know that. Negotiating a shared understanding. Yeah, and it's fantastic because it's like they've got voice prints stuck to that paper. And then two years later, they, that shared, you know, that might come up in some meeting and they, they say, oh, 
yeah, well, I, uh, yeah, well, she came and talked to me about that. And there it is there. There's my word or there's, you know, there's, so there's shared understanding that becomes kind of sticky. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm conceptually sticking that to there in my experience, because it always helps when we a life as abstract and I want to stick it to something which is I can relate to in a physical sense. Um, I've just read um, Dan Davies' The Unaccountability Machine, and he is is a wonderful narrator uh, of a sort of he, he and he goes through he explains cybernetics for the first ten chapters from all these different his very cho well chosen perspectives, and he gets to he's only about twelve chapters long. He get it's a long book, but he gets to chapter ten. And he goes right now. I'll get to the point because it's like you're playing a murder mystery. And you've had to go through the first 10 chapters of just understanding what the murder weapon is. Now I'm going to start telling you about what actually is going on. And it's kind of like that's what you're describing to, in my mind, yeah? You kind of have to go through there's all of this stuff for you to even start to understand what I'm talking about. And then the the learned reader or someone who's already had experience or they, they can go oh yeah get that get that get that get that and they can just go straight to chapter 11 um but you still need that first yeah 10 chapters so um I, i'm comparing it to books again still because i think there's a question here for what is a book and uh and i've got some new senses of that from our conversation so um and i think um Jerry, I said to you once that I think that this is the neo book. Is these conversations that we're having here? This is this part of it. The um, I, I have another old fashioned idea that keeps coming up, and it's the the person, the writer part of it, and the part of me that was schooled in the the writing of the book, and that is around. Um, and I've got a friend who's just bashing on the inside, saying, "You got to tell them. You got to tell them." I go, "Okay, okay." And that is the concept that the book, and I'm talking about a novel here because it, um, I know it's not quite necessarily the same, but sometimes it is. Um, that is, a, that is a, in one way supposed to be represented as an idea, like it's a 100-page idea or a 100,000-word idea, and then it's pieced together with all these, you know, the, the bits and pieces. Um, and... So I've, I've kind of got this other version too, which is coming through there as well. So I think I'm part of what we're doing is doing a neo book around what is what is the con construct around an idea, and a book is just the publicly acceptable fashion of that. And so I think what I'm trying to do here, which is probably too much, but hey, it's, you've got to start this and then go through a process, and that is that I think the what I'm actually where I was going to with the threshold and the and it was actually gateway, I think you said last week, Jerry, was that the book is one of these. So if song lines is one of these and uh, and I use it there as a reference really. And then I had another thing I was exploring which has been around um, this thing called a sound trail, which is stories captured on land over time then the book is kind of like a, a, a another way of sharing some of that information and a neo book is one of those types and we'll probably have a conversation about the name at, at some point. And then the, the physical book then becomes sort of disconnected from land or disconnected from place and it's sort of stuck in language. And the one that we're talking about, which the publishers kind of go, this is our marketing um, our product, then that's sort of ends up being a very stuck in time kind of book. And the other ones that we're that I'm pointing to here are are, diff, are um, coming from different perspectives. Um, I can't say anymore. I better. <laughs> I, I want to hear what Jerry has to say. <laughs> oh, love that. Uh, <laughs> so I may be just restating where we've been, but uh, Jose pointed out that we keep going back and talking about books, uh, and. I think at the center of our conversation is a contextualized or contextual web of living nuggets. 
It's, it's these ideas that are interpenetrated, interwoven in some living context, hopefully uh, with rich conversations and hopefully each getting improved over time by the community that cares about and showed up for that particular nugget with dynamics that are still to be determined. But, you know, ha they have some resemblance to the fork and pull from GitHub and some resemblance to Wiki, uh, working Wikily. Uh, they have some resemblance to other sorts of things, but but who knows exactly what, how that plays out. But we don't have that right now with the kinds of nuggets we're doing. The, the closest thing we have to anything like that is edit or suggest mode in Google Docs or you know, uh, the, the very primitive forms of, of collaboration that a, 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 a text has on GitHub, for example. I've gotten pr practically no pull requests or update requests to the nuggets I've been putting on GitHub, partly because nobody knows I'm doing this and, and nobody knows to go look. Um, but then the book, just to go back to it lightly for a second, is just a linear path through some subset of the nuggets in the space that you look at, that you inhabit. Some of the nuggets could be written by Marc Antoine, by Rick, by who, I don't care. I'm just declaring a path through, and then I'm presto changeo, pressing a button that rolls them up, puts some matter up front and back, and pops them out as an EPUB uh, or something like that. And you know, somewhere in the top, uh, in the front matter, it says, this book is a frozen snapshot of a bunch of thinking at a moment in time selected by this person over here or this group of people who were collective editors, um, which then turns into this work here. It's really meant to attract you to the conversations. Please come in and be, join our community. Uh, the interesting thing is actually in the interactions. And in so doing, we can better understand one another. We can better understand what song lines are and what a, a constitution is and so forth. And then I'll just also highlight something that I, I just really appreciate that Jose and Marc Antoine, both of you in very different ways, are in very large measure about the foundation under what's being said. And like, okay, so so th this book doesn't actually explain everything that you might be able to put in the book about this collection of thinking. To, to understand that, you might have to go explore what's foundational to each of the assertions in the nuggets. Uh, and they should be, should be, if, 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 a, if we have a quality measure of some sort for what a good nugget is, that should be derivable, inferable, visible from the nugget in the sense of, oh, this is a great nugget because it says, oh, this is based on Christian thinking from a capitalist perspective, from a this and a that, and then this is coming from a very different perspective, and this nugget is about the juxtaposition of those two ways of thinking in this particular domain, for example, right? And that's probably too complex for, for where we're heading, but, but not... Incon inconceivable. And I do mm. not think that word means what we think it means. <laughs> um, and uh, Marc Antoine, you had your hand up briefly. Do you want to go after Jose or before? Or... I just had one quick note, which I put in the chat. Oh, cool. Awesome. Which is on books as linear, some math textbooks, uh, sort of the dependency graph of chapters. Yes, there's also a famous novel by Julio Cortazar titled Hopscotch which has a, a suggested order of reading in the on, the on the cover page, which is not the order the chapters are printed in. And then you can read the book in any order you want. Each chapter is just a, a, a hopscotch, standalone piece. a standalone piece that fits into the overall plot. Dr. Botello, please. Oh, may I, Jerry? I yes, sorry. Put my hand a couple of times. I sorry about that. Yes. Um, so two, two things. One is... I envision a Neo Nugget as a thing that can live outside of a platform. Meaning it is its own protocol of what it how it stores its data, how it it's self-referencing and how it points to other nuggets and so on and so forth. And that it has the ability for people to to append to it, comment on it, and all of these other things, but for people to actually append, say, a video to it and say, hey, here's my thoughts on that Neo Nugget. Here's my writing on that Neo Nugget. Here's uh, my tweet on that Neo Nugget. You know, whatever it is, we're talking about that idea. 
And that idea, I often use this term, self-aware. Kind of, it knows what it is. It knows where it links to. It knows where it comes from, and and so I think most books today are actually one idea with a lot of supporting stuff behind it to to sort of make that that book that idea that that book is proposing. Um, be uh, supported in some way. Um, what what I think is when we start to think about it as this sort of independent that the nugget lives on its own, that it it can be. It speaks more to what you were saying, Jerry. I think that the future of of information exchange becomes decomposed from these linear formats that we've lived with, from these fixed formats, these structures, from this publishing behemoth system, and and becomes more uh, playable with. We can all play with it in some way. It's 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 just now a ball that we can all start bouncing around with. And so from a from a technical perspective, I see that the neo nugget is the thing we want to create. And that we need neo nugget readers. That we need different readers, different composers for neo nuggets that allow neo nuggets to then be extracted into whatever the uh, you know format it is and and for the neo nugget to have that information that was extracted from put back in or linked to, so that the neo nugget keeps growing and keeps being enriched, so that what we can have is a conversation. I think we're all seeking is a conversation that's enriched by different perspectives, enriched by different views, different interactions, and not always. Here's my personal view in my book of this thing, and I made link off to some some things in in the footnotes. But you know, it's my view. You bought the book, you get my view. Too bad, so sad. Um, <laughs> how do we do? How do we do that in a way that it, we understand that all of these ideas are hypotheses? That each and every one of us has our own perspective on what that hypothesis might be. And that each and every one of us has the opportunity to engage in that moving forward. Jerry, you're on mute. Uh, Rick, you had your hand up. You want to go first? Uh, well, actually, my, my head, I just want to go off maybe a slight tangent because my head off went in a slightly different direction. Uh, you know, this Neo book, when we looked it up, Neo book, you know, it's already trademarked for other reasons. and. There's living books, and uh, I just playing around with the idea of gen books or regen books or something that maybe is a little different and captures some of the ideas of a complex adaptive learning system. Um, and um, I, I was I was just doing a an AI search on on this, and I'll I'll put the link in for the for the proposition I put in there or potential nugget, which is yeah, I'll put it in. And you can you can decide for yourself as to whether this is a nugget or not, uh, as an example, and whether you find this nugget valuable or not, or in what way could you modify it in a way that would make it more valuable and relevant to you. Um, and um, you know, to me, this speaks to the issue of, of you know, we were talking about strong lines. I would also um, build on that. Um, I, I build on that in an analogous way about learning lines. That learning lines can have a linear or, or mycelium feel to it, and of course, you can leapfrog. I mean, you don't have to follow the lines. Um, and so, the, there's different trajectories for learning lines. They can have coherence and a degree of a thread, and they can be like jazz and be completely. Uh, um, you know, um, this, what's the word? The dis something rather. I forgot the, the, the jazz phrase where things dissonance. are dis, dis, dissonant. Yeah, dissonance. 
And, and so uh, I think there's another word too, but anyway, it doesn't matter, you get the idea. But, you know, how, how do you do it? So um, I, I, I just put that up there as a, as a thing. And I was just thinking about, well, uh, it, it triggered me to th start looking into, you know, what is it about learning lines or, or how do you develop a typology uh, of, of nuggets or a framework of nuggets so that people can, you know, have a grasp of the, the plurality from objective to subjective, yada, yada. Because I, I see them as a heterogeneous um, sort of compilation. And the question is, and of course, anybody's typology may get changed by, and that can be part of the nugget um, mutation, so to speak, you know, that people will change uh, how they view what a nugget is, which is fine. It's, mm -hmm. it's part of the uh, organic process. So anyway, that's where my head went off. Uh, it's it's not completely tangential, but it is related. Um, thanks, Rick. And I put in the chat that um, Jose had recommended we think about Neo Nuggets, which is unique. I just Googled it, and there's there's like a fanfic author named Neo Nugget. That's about it. It does it otherwise, you know, it's pretty clear. And that would get us away from the book thought. So so yeah. renaming renaming books doesn't seem that productive, given our many conversations here about how books are just bait and uh, we, we've overly centered the book, uh, but coming in with some other angle might actually work. Yeah, Perhaps. actually one thing I was just thinking about is even this conversation we've just had, AI can you know give us translations, it can even do different types of interpretations. You can do qualitative research. This pro I mean, I'm not familiar, but I know of them. Um, and so as soon as this call is finished, it could it could give a summary. It could give different interpretations. It could, if you had a typology in it, it would identify what it considered to be nuggets, so to speak. So that the idea of it being a completely continuous asynchronous synchronous process is something we need to evolve towards. So anyway, let's use AI. Oh, one other thing. There's a recent article that came out, which I haven't read, but I'm, I'm going to, which uh, showed that uh, AI and LMN learning systems can actually reduce can, the people's belief in conspiracy theories by 20%. That's the punchline. But, <laughs> you know, the devil's in the details. So I think there is opportunities for AI to be able to uh, help us enhance our meta thinking and, and, our, and our understanding of our meta emotions as well. Uh, Mark Antoine, please. Okay, there was a lot I was reacting to in what Jose was saying, and a lot I agree with, and a lot I'm not sure whether we mean the same <laughs> things by the same words, so I'm not sure if I'm agreeing or not. Uh, when you say it shouldn't live on a platform, I think you mean you, it shouldn't live on a single platform, because it would be a data format and shared between. But, but I think we will need platforms, plural. To Readers, exploit... writers is what I mean by that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and federators. And uh, like when I say there's a statistical aspect, you know, you've seen this was the next thing you're most likely to need to see next. That needs to be a federating application that can compare things. Um, so that's one slight aspect. When you said there's a single idea in a book, I mean, when I said nuggets are fractal, there's a single thesis in a book, which is built off a lot of ideas. Every... Um, and when I say a nugget as a unit of communication is one idea filtered through one perspective, if you will. It's a, that's what, what I was calling a facet. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a textual representation of a facet, uh, which is how a perspective sees or, or how a lens sees an idea. Uh, and so is it that important that the nugget be aware of everything relevant, because the nugget is the facet. It's more that through the nugget, you access this unspeakable, ineffable idea that is the sum of all the nuggets about it. <laughs> now, of course, there has to be a way to go from a nugget to all the related nuggets about that idea. And vice but it's, versa. Not, it's, it's not that the nugget is aware, it's that the... <laughs> The, the, the when I say the nugget is aware, I mean that it has the structure that allows it to both recognize what it's describing it and what it's describing. I think that's what, that feels right. I think that feels right. Okay, good. No, I think I think we agree. Yeah. I just wanted to check on a few. Thank you.
and by the way, I'm I, 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 when I worked on Assemble, uh, which became Ideal Loom in my fork, we had uh, uh, Pipit, uh, nug which we translated as nuggets. Yeah. But the icon we used was gems. Uh, mm -hmm. And right. I like gems yeah. because they have facets. <laughs> For the record. <laughs> Neo gems. Neo, Neo gems. gems. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Salt, salt uh, meta, gems, salt crystals. Meta neo gems. Anyway, go on. <laughs> uh, one of the dynamics I'm interested in sort of fits in where we are in this conversation, uh, and I mentioned it on a couple calls back back aways, is that it's not that each of us will be spewing or spawning like zillions of nuggets individually, but rather that we will find other nuggets we really agree with and believe in and we'll align ourselves with them. We'll, I don't want to say vote them up, uh, but we'll use them as You're part right. of our representational scheme. We'll curate them, but we'll curate them in a way that indicates that we agree with this nugget, this nugget, <clears throat> this nugget written by someone else, uh, you know, Schmachtenberger or Postrel or whoever, but the, or Cory Doctorow on initiativeification, <clears throat> like like that that thing is an idea, and as expressed here, it very much attaches to how I feel about it, what I think should be done about it, et cetera, et cetera. And my hope is that we crystallize rather than just create an endless, uh, crazy, unnavigable uh landscape of too many opinions fractured up in too many places so i'm very interested in what we were talking about a moment ago which you might think of and this is probably bad language um, a nuggetization algorithm or protocol um and may uh, jose that this might be territory to think about our protocols i don't know but but could if if we had gen ai listening into the conversation which we do by the way i'm going to get a summary from the zoom gen ai of our conversation. And I'm hoping that at the point where you said that, Rick, earlier, it'll be, it'll like wake up with a start and go, oh my gosh, they're talking about me. <laughs> um, because of course we know it's sentient and we're just like, you know, we're just hum mere humans. Um, but I'm, I'm really interested in whether that algorithm or protocol could help us crystallize rather than, oh, I've helped you define yet another set of new nuggets, et cetera. Instead, it would be like, yeah, yeah, you said this and this and this. And by the way, here are the closest things already in your body of framing and history and conversation that were like that. Because one of the things, one of the byproducts I get of note taking in the brain is that I, I can go back and find where I said something before or someone else said something before and then connect back to it as reinforcing evidence of that thing I really like, as opposed to it being yet a new phrase or sentence lost in space. Uh, Jose. I, I think Marc Antoine meant to raise his hand. It's just slightly before me. It's I, I'll try to go fast. The the when you say what you're describing is what I'd call a perspective. And I think, yes, there's an algorithm for creating this perspective, which is what you see, what you align to individually. And there's a different algorithm for creating the, the multi-perspective, which is Again, problem-based, here's what the community sees as relevant to that problem, which is a very different algorithm because it's about the plurality as opposed to the single point of view. They're both important, but I'm just pointing out that there's not one uh, nuggetization, uh, sorry, I would say nugget weaving algorithm. <laughs> Or gem weaving. I, that, that makes sense to me. I just reposted uh, my nuggets, narratives, and points of view video from 2010 because I, I was sort of in this direction. It's like uh, narratives string together nuggets. Uh, a pile of narratives creates a point of view on some domain or some set of topics. And then you might have another point of view about some different set of topics. Because if we're talking yeah. about how do you regulate drugs, that's one set of topics. Another one could be like, how do we regulate radio waves? And regulation is the common theme, but they're very different topics. And there might be some really nifty commonalities if you have a particular attitude about regulation that's novel and useful, that might be the shared set of nuggets across those two different domains. And you might be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In both of these cases, even though the policy domain is really different, we have a very similar approach for how to regulate, which is based over here on this foundational set of nuggets. 
that that was would, that would make regulation me really happy. category. Yeah, that, but that would make me really happy. And regulation could be one layer of the self governance, self regulation stack, which is the thing we've also been talking about in other OGME calls. Like, hey, what 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 works for governance? The stuff over there about how we regulate and and you know how much should be explicit. How much do you make as norms? How much do you pour into law? I think those are all really interesting and important questions that nobody's done a great job of answering. What got put up in my mind when um, you were saying what you were saying, Jerry, is that uh, earlier uh, before Marc Antoine, um, I think AI can help us do both very well, but I think there's also a third piece. So the, the first piece is I think we can be aided into identifying what nug which what nugget I'm talking about uh, is is what I'm saying that same nugget that already pre exists, um, it, you know, and and helping me reframe what I'm saying into some clarity based on not only the the fundamental idea nugget but all of the the nuggets around it that that have emerged the, the facets that have emerged from that nugget and i think that wow you know can you imagine being a 10 year old kid and having a thought and it's like oh i just had this thought and it's like poof like it's expanded on you and now you have all these facets on that thought and you're like wow this is so cool like i now have a clear understanding of this idea hey then there's the other side that both uh, you and, and, and Marc Antoine uh, spoke about, which is how did how did these th these facets relate to each other, and and how do they link in sort of this meta uh, network of of ideas? And I think it would be very helpful at at bridging, and not only in tying different facets together to the to the core um, idea, but also connecting different ideas that have these facets that start to come together with one another that bridge each other right and identifying and helping identify these these bridges the third i think is how can we uh, build narratives that are um, personal in in nature like I want to tell my story, but I want to tell my story with nuggets. And 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 my story is a bunch of ideas that everybody's already talking about. There's ever like I don't have any new ideas. What I have is a new way of perspective uh, perceiving them and a perspective on them and a life story that that reinforces them. So how can I do that? And to me, that all all of those three pieces really bring the idea of an AI or multiple AIs that can serve us, us in bringing these um, ideas, independent ideas to the world as ways of interacting with them that make it easy for the average person so that I don't have to become an expert in neo nuggets. I just have to have an idea and have the AI do a lot of the hard work for finding, sorting, indexing, morphing, and so forth. I'm pleased we're finding useful tasks for the new AIs. Um, I'm, go ahead, Mark Antoine. Or, or anybody else, because I, we've been I've been taking a lot of space. Yeah, Jax. No, no work, no nothing to add for me. Okay, I'm. On the one hand, I'm very much thinking in those terms, can we use the AIs to help us refine our thoughts? And what do we mean by refine, right? Again, when I said multiple communities have different criteria. And uh, on the other hand, I don't trust AIs. Uh, I think they do shoddy work mostly for now, uh, or maybe forever. Uh, they seem, especially when we're speaking about ideas, they're bringing us back to the bland average. They're a centrifugal force. Which is fine. I mean, being able to know that your idea at least passes the test of not being uh, uh, vulnerable to a simple attack from the land average 
that's certainly a bar that you need to pass. <laughs> but uh, I have low opinion of AI, whatever. On the other hand, yes, it's an actor. The, the fact that you can have a private conversation with an AI to refine your thought before you submit it to a group can be uh, can be useful in trust terms in terms of of being uh, if, if you're afraid to speak or afraid to speak something like I find many people are afraid to speak something that may look bad on them getting an AI to double check the obvious mistakes could be really useful now all that said you ask a question that I think I think was fundamental how do I tell a narrative in terms of nuggets and in my mind and and this is me I've been thinking and I'm, I'm kind of Varying here, you know, I've been thinking, thinking, and talking about frames a lot. And in a way, what I think you call uh, yes, entropy. I'm totally sorry. Uh, in I've been using the word nugget because I'm in this crowd, in, in terms of a narrative, like a unit of understanding. But for me, the ideal form of the nugget is a frame. And of course, there's this whole question that learning to think formally in frames is the result of training. I don't expect people to do that out of the bat. And so getting an AI to help them formalize their thinking, get their, their thinking more precise, wonderful use of AI. What you're saying is a bit unclear or, or it's a bit too generic. It's not testable. Uh, can we get a, you know a, a either actionable or testable claim? Uh, and, and and make it a bit more formal, so we'll enter the conversation with something more more solid. That's the formal part of my brain talking. And when you're speaking of narrative, obviously it's not made of formal things. You're telling a story. It's not, and 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 so in my mind, the frames, the formal frames, are kind of the line notes of the narrative. I see it, at, or the margin notes. Like I see the narrative as text and, oh, by the way, here's this frame and here's this frame and here's this frame. And you could click on the frame and see, okay, this frame is tying up this assertion with this assertion and saying there's a causality here and there's something there. And the, the nugget as a short, readable on its own piece of knowledge is important and useful, but I think a narrative, it's about the weave. So you don't want it to be made of nuggets in the sense of short text, but seeing it as annotated with nuggets as structures could be extremely useful. Could you repeat that? That's my, my Could you repeat that, Marc-Antoine, please? Absolutely. Can you? Okay. Can, can I double click on that? Absolutely. The, 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 for me, there's the nugget as short narrative, unit of communication in language. There's a nugget as formal frame, which is where I want to get because it's more composable and more computable. And there's the weave narrative. And I'm thinking a weave narrative need not be, because it's a weave, making it as bits of short and dependent readable short texts may not be the best way to, to make a good weave. But in a weave, I could see annotating the weave with here's this frame, here's this frame, here's this frame. And the frame, like when you click on the frame, you could see, oh, and look, it's the elements of the frame are this, this part of that text and that part of that text and that part of that text. So you see how the frame connects elements of the weave narrative. So that's another way to, for me, I'd express nuggets as opposed to small bits of text. Is that clearer? Yes, and, and I totally agree. I'll come in after Rick and think a little bit about that. Go ahead, Rick. I have a question. My question is, is a question a nugget? Absolutely. Okay, good. Because um, I, I, I want to, uh, uh, Mark Antoine, I want to talk to you about the issue of the average, you know, the average output of AI. One of the issues with average is that everybody thinks they're above average and everybody's average is different. And so you know, it depends on who you're referring to and who, what, what may be average to you may be above average for other people. 
And so I, I see AI as a way of being able to actually accelerate the process of raising the, the, the mode, so to speak, or the mean, so that people can get up and, and be so, above average more quickly. Go ahead. So I, I, go ahead. Very quickly. Sorry, Jerry. No, I'm no, that's okay. No, that's okay. I'm not thinking of average at all in terms of low and high. I'm thinking yeah. of average as the, the diverse color wheel and, and the beige blend in between. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the kind of soft consensus. Now, sometimes the consensus is right, and sometimes it's important to have the consensus view because the extremes are crazy. And sometimes the extremes have their own wisdom and the average is missing on that. And that's what I mean. That's what I meant by average here. It's okay, not about high and low. Well, okay, I mean that's fine. That's a good clarification. So it's it, it's the issue of discernment. But I mean, as you've been uh, talking, again, I, I came up with another question, which I'll put in here, which is how can we create a framework of learning nuggets, metaphors, pearls of wisdom, content and process parcels of knowledge that create ongoing learning lines in analogous ways to indigenous storylines. And mm -hmm. so I, I, as you were um, doing it, I was just playing around and, and, and asked AI to respond to the question. What I find about complex questions is somebody will look at that question, they'll say, what the fuck does that mean? You know, and I, the nice thing about asking complex questions is that it can actually break it down in a way that can take a complex question. I, I, I think there's a sort of a, uh, you know, we're, we're biased towards a sort of reductionism in our questioning. And so the questions have to be something that you can quickly understand and whatever. Can't have too much details because we can't handle it, you know, and it confuses people. And we want the simplicity. We want the reductionism. And I think that's part of the learning resistance that comes from dealing with complex questions. And, and actually, I find AI quite good. I mean, I had somebody question a question that I put on some LinkedIn thing or made a comment. And she says, can you explain what you mean by that? So I went to AI, took my thing. I says... AI, will you explain what this means? And it did a very good job. I was making reference to, to Margaret Atwood's book, The Practical Utopia, and it did a nice, good enough job from my point of view to just to give a quick thing, rather than me having to write something out to explain what I meant. It was, it was, it was, it was okay. On the other hand, it just raises the it raises the floor for generative dialogue. You're absolutely right. It, it, it did okay because it had somebody to plagiarize from in this case. Uh, it's it's not, it didn't do okay. It copied okay. Uh, because it, 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 and it's not just somebody to plagiarize from. It's It had a community to plagiarize from. Uh, and the community came up, like if you do the average of the community ideas, you get something that's palatable. But it's not, it's never going to be original about any of this and and it's it it's is not, interesting it, it, I, i'm looking at this answer it came up i'd have to read it in detail and basically what i'd have to do is there's a lot of talk right now about sane washing i'd have to think about it to come up in a way in which this makes sense which would be my input because i'm not exactly. sure that this makes that much sense <laughs> Uh, That's okay. it's, it's good. It, it, it's it's very good tea leaves. It's better than tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but, I, I, but the, the... I play with tarot cards sometimes for that effect, and I find it useful. <laughs> I don't believe that they have mystical properties of dividing the future, but they're good inspiration, right? Uh... <laughs> well, well, let me just say what I'm saying is it, it, it's evocative. It it raises. You can quickly gather a lot of data. That can be evocative, and all I'm saying it raises the tough. floor of dialogue, and, and so there, you can and up like, your and, and you like and you can up your game much more quickly um, by using it. I, I see it as a research assistant that should not be trusted. I agree with you; it needs to be verified, cross validated, and you need to discern it. On the other hand, it can it, the cap, capacity of fast thinking is a phenomenal. And uh, I'm quite happy to delegate, you know, a, a, a quick, fast thinking scan of something, knowing that it's not going to come up with anything original, but I wouldn't be able to do that as quickly as AI could. And it creates a way of, of uh, anyway, that's, that's the, you know, that's the upside and downside of it. That's how I see it. And, and, and I will say one thing, use the word plagiarize. 
and, and to me, that's a negative frame for something about how to curate information. But that just shows your bias as far as I'm concerned. But it may not be a bias. I'm just assuming that it might be a bias against AI. A bit, yes. <laughs> we're, we're getting Jerry, the, we've been... We're, it's okay. We're getting near the end of our time and things are just getting juicy. Um, I, I, and I've got to get off the, the call at the top of the hour. Uh, we've managed to go the full 90 minutes on this topic and not get back to our protocols. So I suggest we prioritize our protocols uh, next call. Uh, so let's jump in there instead and see what we can do. And uh, Jose, any way you want to set us up for that or whatever, um, count, count us. We're, we're meeting tomorrow on, oh, that's on right. uh, the how page we have so a... we can prep a little bit for that. That sounds, that sounds great. Perfect. That'll give us a nice, really nice chance to do that. Um, and I just wanted to go for a second back to like our nuggets, part of the flow or the explaining the flow. And I think, I think that this is sort of, a. did, did an, you just I, call them our nuggets? No, I know, but we could have, but I, I didn't, <laughs> um, that there's different ways of including a nugget in a narrative. Some of them are just passing reference. And some of them are actually inclusion of the full idea or the full text. And it depends what you're doing, why you're doing it, whether you've mentioned it before, all those things are at play. But there are times like the first time you mention something that you probably want to have an explainer for it. Common nuggets, commune nuggets. I like it. And that sounds political. <laughs> um, the communards, les communards, um, which was a band as well. Um, so I think we have to sort of figure this out because there's some kind of uh, modern rhetoric of how much do you include a particular thing and how much does it need to be reworded, rephrased, adapted to the context of the, the story you're trying to tell right now. Um, but sometimes when we make a, like poetry, you know, we'll make a tiny little gesture over to the left and it means a lot of stuff and it means a lot of stuff in, in the social context and it also sometimes means a lot of stuff in the poet's context. And that's what makes poetry rich and exciting sometimes is that is that all that stuff just gets drawn in by a gesture uh, in half of a word or half of a sentence, right? Um, so I think we have to figure that out as we, as we go. Um, and with that, I think we leave the nuggets on the table, go back to our lives. And uh, Jack, see you in a couple hours on the Josie call. Um, Jose, see you tomorrow and talk about uh, how. How? How not? How not? Thanks, all. Ciao, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, all. Thanks.